Hi, uh, Dave Smith here, DJS Photography. Uh, it's been a little while since I posted a video. I've been pretty busy on uh, various sort of projects. Uh, I was traveling uh, recently in north of England. Uh, and there are a few images on my uh, blog from that trip. I found this amazing um, north, little tiny little village in North Yorkshire. Uh, there's a bit of a time capsule. Uh, the, the, uh, the buildings all date from so the 17th, 18th century. The streets are all cobbled and preserved. Um, and it was pre, it was pre empty when I was there. It was, uh, it was a grey, miserable day, of course. Uh, that's how it is in the north of England. But anyway, this video is about uh, this uh, monster here. I took delivery of this um, a couple of weeks ago. This is a 14 by uh, 17 inch uh, view camera. And uh, I, I, I kind of got to thinking that you know, as we, uh, we're starting to get quite a lot of, um, quite a lot of people on the, uh, on the blogs and the forums and on YouTube, um, really going uh, going overboard about how wonderful the new uh, mirrorless digital cameras are and I was a little bit amused because of course uh, you could argue that this here is a, a mirrorless camera in that it has no mirror. Uh, not, not really as compact as, uh, as those uh, Fuji and Sony uh, digicams but um, uh, offering a, a heck of a sight more uh, detail and information. I would think if you took a 14 by 17 inch sheet of film and uh, uh, scanned it even at uh, only moderate scan uh, resolutions, you, you could easily get to well over a, a gigabyte of information. Um, so I was a little amused by, uh, by all of that. And that. That's partly what prompted me to do this uh, video, but I also thought people might be uh, interested to see this. Um, this was specially made, of course. You don't buy these things off the shelf. And um, it was made for me by a guy in uh, the Czech Republic in Prague. Uh, it was not very well packaged, I have to say, when it came, so there was some damage. Uh, the ground glass screen seemed to have just turned to dust and, ev and, and evaporated away. There was truly just a few of the tiniest shards uh, still in the packaging. Uh, the maker was really good about that. He, uh, he had another one uh, available and posted it out immediately. Uh, unfortunately, on fitting it, I did then crack it, so I've got a line of glue. Um, but it doesn't really uh, it doesn't really impact the performance, and I'll, I will probably grind another screen myself at some stage. But also uh, <clears throat> in the damage, there's a rack uh, here for for uh, focusing. And this channel here sits in a little groove, and that's that's the bit that moves backwards and forwards, and that's attached to the back assembly by two uh, screws underneath. Now those two screws have to be really small so they don't come through and interfere with the swing mechanism. And on the other side, they were completely stripped, and it was uh, it was impossible to uh, to refit those. So I got some bolts, I think some M3 bolts, and just cut those down to size, and that was that was a, very, a fairly quick job really to fix that side. And this little pin here that holds the camera closed was all bent and mashed, and that was quite easy to pull back together. So it wasn't too uh, it wasn't too difficult to get the thing uh, back to where it should be. Uh, <coughs> it's beautifully made, cherry wood dovetail joints. Uh, nice, uh, sturdy uh, sort of metal work everywhere. Um, I'm really pleased with it, and particularly for the price. It was about half the price of uh, anything else. Half the price of the Chamonix uh, or the Ritter. Um, and, and as I said, perfectly well made. Uh, you know, I, I was a little worried about this, uh, about the thickness of this rack. Uh, and then I happened to see a Deerdorf while I was in the north of England. And, had a rack of exactly the same dimensions, so that made me feel a little better. And the thing focuses perfectly smoothly. Uh, it's set up now to, <coughs> excuse me, to infinity focus. They see I have a, uh, a Nikon uh, APO 760mm uh, uh, barrel lens on the front of there. It's an f11 lens with no uh, shutter, but it starts at f11 and goes through to f90. So I'm kind of thinking that, uh, that this thing 
will be shorter enough. Um, I imagine that the uh, exposure is going to be fairly lengthy. So, um, so I'm not worried about uh, about the shutterless uh, lens at all. Um, the bellows are very sturdy materials, so the sag isn't, uh, I think, a real issue. Uh, if it is, I might just put a tab in here just to just to be able to hold it up out of the uh, out of the light path if I need to. I do need to do that on the uh, on the wilderness uh, for for moderate to long extensions. I've put the wilderness up over there actually so that you can get a comparison of the sizes uh, and when I got the wilderness I have to say that looked like a really big camera and and it is you know it's an 8x10 uh, but you can see uh, over there that it's kind of dwarfed by this thing here and let me show you the um, let me show you the dark slides So this is the dark slide for the 8x10 and this one is the dark slide for the 14x17 and I can just show you those together and you can see that that's a really big piece of film there. Okay, So uh, I'll just pop those to one side. So what I'm going to do uh, next is uh, I'm going to change the um, well I was actually I was going to change the lens, clip up a dark cloth and show you the screen. But uh, I have to say when I did a previous take of this, which I didn't really like, so I'm reshooting it. Uh, and when I did that, and I was going off to get my dark cloth to peg it around this. I saw the uh, image, just this just an image of the university building across the way there out of the window of my flat uh, I saw this uh, image and it's uh, incredibly bright on the uh, on the dark slide um, so I'm probably uh, I'm probably just going to leave this uh, lens on set the camera up over here and show you the uh, image on the dark slide and how how bright that is although the sun seems to have gone behind a cloud now and it's, uh, it's somewhat darker in here but if need be I'll put a dark cloth on but I, I, I'm quite interested for you to see just how bright this screen is uh, even at uh, f11 with that uh, Nikon lens it's, uh, it's pretty impressive actually so I'm going to stop talking now I'm going to stop the video or we'll move the camera and I'll show you the image on the, um, on the ground glass screen I hope this has been of some interest. Bye for now. Okay, so there is the image on the uh, ground glass screen. Uh, incredibly bright. Uh, I, I could easily compose and focus uh, right here with no uh, dark cloth. I don't expect to be able to do that outside very well. Um, but, you know, who knows? Maybe I can. You can just see a tram going by in the reflections of the... Uh, building opposite I think uh, the little blurry bit across the middle of the screen there is the railing just outside my window and this uh, as I said before this is set to uh, infinity focus and I think you can see the little line of glue protruding in here where I cracked the screen while fitting it uh, how irritating is that um, but you can see people walking and you can see the traffic going by in those uh, in those windows uh, and as I say incredibly bright screen even though the lens is at f11 uh, so I'm, I'm pretty impressed by that I have to say uh, real surprise but there's the uh, there's the image on the ground glass screen on a reasonably bright day uh, here in Belgium the sun seems to have disappeared behind a cloud just for uh, the moment but I think that gives you uh, an idea of, uh, of what you see on these things and let me tell you 14 by 17 inches is a really big piece of film uh, okay so I hope this has all been of uh, some interest and, uh, and some use um, bye for now